On the 12th of January 2010, a powerful earthquake shook Haiti, causing enormous devastation. Over 220,000 people lost their lives, some 300,000 were injured, and well over a million were left homeless. The Swiss response was immediate. 11 hours after the catastrophe, a seven-person advanced detachment of Swiss rescue left Zurich for Haiti in a Rega jet. Its mission, to prepare the way for a possible Swiss rescue deployment and evaluate the most urgent needs on location. It quickly became clear that a Swiss rescue engagement would not be appropriate. We've decided not to undertake a relief mission. The situation is so difficult in terms of logistics and practically impossible to control that it would be a bit reckless to launch a mission with 60 to 100 people. So tomorrow we will focus on services in the areas of lodging, medical supplies and water and distribute aid supplies after that. So instead of Swiss rescue, the command post decides to send a rapid response team to the disaster zone. Materials for deployment are immediately prepared and inspected in Vaben, including various aid supplies, medical goods, core members' personal gear and logistical equipment. The materials are transported by lorry to Zurich airport, where three cargo planes take them to Santo Domingo in the neighboring Dominican Republic. The detour is necessary because the airport in Port-au-Prince is damaged and hopelessly overloaded as a result. Transferring the goods from the plane to a material depot, then on to lorries and on across the border to Haiti, is a logistical challenge. A logistics team stationed in Santo Domingo gets the job done. Overall, the rapid response mission brings 170 tons of aid supplies and operating equipment into the earthquake zone. The devastation in Haiti is enormous. Many hospitals are also damaged, and doctors and nurses are among the victims. As a result, medical care has largely broken down. Four days after the quake, the SDC team of doctors is among the first to be up and running, taking over the operation of a children's emergency hospital in Port-au-Prince. We're here in the compound of the major hospital complex in Port-au-Prince. Some of the buildings are in danger of collapsing and can't be used, so we decided for safety reasons to put up tents in the courtyard. That's why we're performing surgery in tents. The hospital consists of ten large tents, including an outpatient's reception and treatment tent a surgical tent with three operating tables and tents for inpatients' care. In another five tents, the Swiss medics, in close cooperation with teams of local doctors, are running a maternity and neonatal ward. We have lots of patients with fractures, with soft tissue injuries ranging from the skull to the arms down to the extremities. In many cases, the injuries are open wounds that become infected. You could almost compare the surgery we do here with battlefield surgery in terms of the injury profile and infection rate. The hygiene conditions are a serious challenge for us. We have to struggle with conditions that will be unthinkable in Switzerland. During surgery, we see ants crawling up our sterile cloths. We cut up boxes to shoo away flies. But still, everyone lends a hand. Ultimately, we manage to perform the operation. The children get the help they need, and that makes me very happy. 
Surgeon Hermann Orbeli has worked in several war zones and has treated over 1,000 victims of war injuries. He's used to working with the simplest of equipment while remaining efficient. In this tent here, we only have children with fractures of the lower extremities. That's why we've installed these very simple extensions. One tug here, that's all it takes for the small children, pulls the leg straight up for three, four weeks, and the fracture is more or less taken care of. Brunia Jacquet and her son Baudelaire went untreated for days after the quake until they were admitted to the emergency hospital. I lost my two cousins and my aunt. Many people died. My house collapsed over us. We were just barely saved. And now I'm in the hands of the Swiss who are taking good care of us. Many patients are traumatized. In the hospital, they try to process what they've experienced. We heard a strange noise. One of the girls shouted, earthquake, and she managed to run out into the yard in time. But for us, it was too late. We didn't make it outside. We were still in the house when it collapsed on us. But my aunt and I weren't injured. Then later, I found my niece. When it happened, she was upstairs with her mother, her little brother and her grandmother. All the others died, except for her. It gets pretty emotional. We're treating the smallest children here. Many of them don't have parents or brothers and sisters anymore. As a surgeon, I'm used to looking at wounds. The wound itself doesn't bother me, but the story behind it, when you ask about it, does hit me hard. Several hundred people in all received medical treatment at the Swiss Emergency Hospital. Some 600 surgical operations, many of them life-saving, were performed on children. Towards evening, the team members stationed in Port-au-Prince make their way back to the base of operations. The base was set up in a district that had not been heavily affected by the earthquake. This is where management coordinates the emergency aid mission. The biggest challenge in this deployment is logistics. Transport of goods is complicated, and access to our warehouses at the airport is difficult. Communication is also a problem among the teams in the field, the base of operations and the headquarters in Bern. So it's very difficult to coordinate efforts. Another problem is traffic in the cities. We often waste several hours in traffic jams or because of bad roads. All this makes it difficult to do our job quickly and efficiently. With an average of 50 experts in action, this is the biggest emergency aid effort in the history of Swiss humanitarian aid. Logistical resources are stretched to the limit. Obtaining food and arranging vehicles and accommodations in a devastated city is an enormous challenge. Alexandre Millard and her family were lucky enough to survive the earthquake. I was just doing the laundry when I felt the earthquake. I ran straight to my child. We managed to get out just before the house caved in. 
We survived, but the six-person family from the lower floor is still lying in rubble. Now we're in the street. We don't have any clothes, no sandals, we feel naked. We wash in the street and eat fair. Alexandre Millard is not alone in her fate. After the quake, thousands of people sought safety in public places. Since then, they've lived in improvised shelters, mostly under appalling hygiene conditions. An SDC team therefore investigates the most urgent needs in these places. It quickly becomes clear that access to drinking water is the biggest problem facing the survivors. In the first phase, we focused on the drinking water. During the first phase, we focused on supplying drinking water because that was the most urgent need. The people had lost their water supply. We set up water tanks that we received from Switzerland in various places. We ensure that the water is distributed and that resupply is functioning. Here, SDC is working with a Swiss businessman who was already treating and selling water before the earthquake. The different sized water tanks hold between 4,000 and 10,000 liters. 14 of these provisional distribution centers were set up in all. At a daily consumption rate of 5 liters per person, there's enough water for 12,000 people. Water quality is tested regularly. Someone from each camp is assigned to call for a new water delivery before the tank is empty. Before we had no water here, now we have good drinking water. But we don't have a proper roof over our heads. When it rains, we all get wet. We have nothing to eat. We have nothing at all. Just lots of problems. In addition to supplying water tanks, SDC repaired around 40 kiosks where water was previously sold and delivered water to them. Free drinking water will be provided here until the situation is normalized. All in all, SDC is supplying drinking water to some 50,000 people in the capital. SDC provides aid even where no television cameras are filming and few aid organizations are active. In Petit Guave province in the southwest of the country, for example, the ground here has subsided about two meters as a result of the quake, making most houses along the waterfront uninhabitable. We have nowhere to spend the night. I sleep outside in the street. My cousin sleeps in the church. Then in the morning, I have to get out of the way so cars can pass. These people have nothing. SDC is the first organization here to distribute aid supplies to the population. We're here at the port of Petit Guave in Haiti, where a distribution is planned for today. We'll be distributing light family shelter kits. Distributing aid supplies here in Haiti is quite a challenge, mainly because of the sheer number of people and because practically every family has been affected. Let's say we have 500 of these shelter kits to distribute and there are 10,000 people standing in line. It's just really difficult. Occasionally, aid lorries are looted. In response, SDC has called on UN peacekeepers and American troops to guard its shipments. That way, the distribution of goods is usually relatively peaceful. In all, about 2,000 family kits are distributed to the neediest families. The family shelter kits we're distributing consist of a large tarpaulin and a drawstring to go with it. 
a few sleeping mats and two water containers, a kitchen set so people can cook again, along with a mosquito net. In the second phase, light building materials like wooden boards, corrugated sheet metal, plastic sheets and tools are distributed to the population. STC intentionally does not supply tents to the survivors. This allows people to build provisional shelters themselves using the rubble from their houses in line with their own needs. The STC shelter program is also focusing on the schools that were destroyed. The aim of this assessment would be to identify schools where tents could be put up in the ground so classes could start again, on a temporary basis, until the buildings can be repaired or rebuilt. Starting in the emergency aid phase, STC began gathering information for a medium-term commitment in the early recovery and reconstruction stages. SDC, together with Swiss relief organizations and Swiss Solidarity, will be involved in the following areas during reconstruction of the country. Rebuilding of social infrastructure, such as schools, food security, together with the World Food Programme, rural development, for example, rehabilitation of water systems. Switzerland will therefore be actively working in this devastated country for several years.